I'm going into this completely blind. I know nothing about the Adams family. Generic control from the Dr. Goose Moo here, back with another nostalgic video, and today we're doing the Adams Family movies, which I'm guessing there is more than one. I know basically nothing about the Adams Family other than that dude, like the little song with the the double snap or whatever. I like I said, apparently this is something that's really really popular, and I know pretty much nothing about it. It's a family of like monsters or something like that. This wasn't even requested or anything. I just saw this as an old nostalgic video, or not old, it's like a year old, uh, but it's a nostalgic video on a something I know literally nothing about that's apparently really, really popular. But if you want to check my reaction to the last nostalgic group video, which was, uh, it wasn't Madam Web, it was Morbius, which was, it's Morbius time. I'll leave my reaction to that right up there. Also, the link down below in the description. Also, in place on my channel with all my nostalgic group reactions. Going across the order, and people were talking about the title. Yes, it was obviously, it's Morphe, Morpheus time instead of, it's Morvin time, because I know, didn't know anything about the movie. It was on purpose. Uh, but, this is going to be about the Addams Family. I know nothing about it. I don't know how many movies there are. They're monsters. I remember, actually, I've been to a Rob Zombie concert, and I didn't know any of their songs, which is very actually on par for me. But <laughs> thank you so much for being here. Shout out to patrons. They got all the videos there early. Could not do this if it was not for them. Give me some ideas for some other nostalgic critic videos down below in the comment section. Because, like I said, I do read our comments. But, like I said, shout out to patrons. I really could not do this if it was not for them. Hope to your subscribers. We're approaching 100,000 subscribers. But let's go ahead and jump into the Adams Family's movies. All right. I'm going into this completely blind. I know nothing about the Adams Family. I know that they have a song that you, like, snap or something. Uh, mm. uh, that's supposed to be the Adams Family? It's interesting to think the Adams Family the dark, twisted, morbid, disturbed, pretty much any depressing word you can think of uh, has more family-friendly representations than non-family-friendly. Why? They have two sitcoms, two children's comedies, an animated kid series, two if you count Scooby-Doo. <laughs> what? They all did in that one. Several video uh, games and lots of kid-friendly merchandise. Why? They're this Maybe popular. I know nothing about them. Show, Come on now. I really enjoyed it. But more importantly, it introduced well, so me to the, the original actors. source material, the Charles Adams cartoons. Published in the New Yorker around the 30s, his cartoons were like many of the New Yorker cartoons, very adult, and sometimes took a second to figure out. Hey. But he had two things that helped him stick out. One, they were gothic as hell. Half the time you had to go looking for the joke, oh. and doing so allowed you to take in these beautifully dreary worlds. The second was these reoccurring characters. You gotta look closely well, into that names, sad but they worlds. They seemed to represent the traditional nuclear family, just in a world of horror and darkness. It was the traditional happy family uh, doing things that, that Frankenstein's monster. The traditional happy family happy. There was a feeling that anything surreal or even magical could happen as long as it had a dark bite to it. Uh, it was a great contrast that made for a great show, but that's like a I really said, good casting. It was a family the actors. Show. It wasn't as gritty or adult as the comic because it wasn't allowed to be as gritty or adult as the comic back then. Uh, well, thankfully, another fan of the comic was Barry Sonnenfeld who made a name as an astounding cinematographer, but had never directed a film before. He was handed like, a script to the Adams Family. He never directed he a film before, terrible, and he... And asked why it wasn't given to someone like Tim Burton or Terry Gilliam. The producer said they said it was terrible, and passed. <laughs> Which, if you've seen some of the Planet scripts the they said yes to, that's saying something. I've the seen one Tim Burton on movie. Because he really liked <laughs> the Adams Family, and said... And it was, I think, Charlie and Chocolate Factory? Weirdo to make it. He wants someone that was going to uh, take chances and break the rules, because he didn't know all the rules yet. Barry agreed, insisted on a rewrite, okay. and we got, in my opinion, the most faithful interpretation of those dark as hell cartoons. Hmm. Hopefully I don't have to blur anything because of copyright. Adam's family values. The first sign this was going to be the best interpretation of the material was the trailer. Not the teaser, which was cute and again <laughs> was taken from the Charles Adams strip, but the longer version that starts out like a horror film. And let's uh -huh. be honest, some of the imagery from this could be. Uh, what? What? Showtime! Is this supposed to be just unsettling? It was also accompanied by something very unexpected for a film like this, a PG-13 rating. Really? Keep in mind, okay. this is before PG-13 just meant Thor says two dirty words or someone is implied killed off screen. This is hearts uh, can be ripped out and monkey brains can be eaten PG-13. Okay. Is this when kids That's... show adaptations could have their main character swear up a storm? Yeah! <laughs> but what makes the film so great is that it's a perfect blending of the TV show and the Charles Adams cartoons. Yes, I guess the rated R things, rated R movies weren't really a thing. And those classic corny one-liners slipped their way in. 
thing, you're a handful. But so much of the focus was on the atmosphere. Much like the comic, you could get lost in the beauty and life that steams from the ugly and dead. So much huh? so that the jokes would sometimes be in the background, allowing you to discover them wait, 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 wait. lost in the scenery. Many of the jokes were even taken straight from the drawings. Now, the difference between these PG-13 jokes and, say, the PG jokes of the family-friendly family Adams the wheel. family properties is that it goes that one step further. Ah, miss! The best example I can give is those old Warner Brothers cartoons. Which ones? Some characters get squashed by anvils and other heavy objects and they turn out fine. But when they off themselves, that oh. seems a lot darker. Either way, the character still comes back for further shenanigans, but the connection to something more Are they allowed to show that anymore? brings a more recognizable <laughs> misery to the joke. But it's that kind of humor that gives the film its needed edge. The characters always survive, but what they go through is recognizably gruesome. How are they able this to is survive so that? Abstract, it's absurd. Where this is so realistically grim, it's unnerving. Bravo! Pugsley. And PG-13 Adams, like the original cartoons, isn't afraid to push the envelope. It's a way of saying it's all miserable and terrible, but by recognizing it oh. and embracing it, you can live with it. Maybe even find a positive way to look uh. at it. Which is why the darker the Adams family what? goes, not only the more funny it gets, what? but in a strange way, the more inspiring it gets. Like I said, the joke is that they enjoy things that people would find macabre. And by having Why, all the family enjoy what, it so what much, they enjoy to being around each other. Which, ironically, makes them a very healthy family. Their version of poisoning or chopping but they're up in their own little another world, is our version of unconventional play. Because they always survive and ask for more. <laughs> even when they fight, they still love each other and come together as a family in the end. The great thing is, they don't even have to have any sappy full house music or verbal declaration of that. It's just naturally shown in how they treat each other. Huh. Well in the realms of this fantasy world where you can survive a lot. Their love for each other doesn't need to be said. So it's supposed it's to be said in a different world, shown. okay. That's... My own dear brother. <laughs> Brothers. At the center is the actors who are all wonderfully Other. cast and bring the perfect amount of bombastic joy or quiet content. Even if the story is, admittedly, a little dumb. It centers around the family. What, like what are these Julia outfits? Gomez, Whoever's in charge of costumes went crazy. Searching for Gomez's long lost brother, Fester. To try and rob them blind, their accountant sends in a look-alike, played by Christopher Lloyd, to pretend to be Fester, and wouldn't you know it, by the end it turns out to really be him with amnesia. Hurricane yeah, Irene, wait stupid, a minute. But the reasons it works is you legit feel the emotions all these characters have for each other. It does kind of make sense a psychopath would find himself fitting into this family. Cyanide, Fester. As if we'd run out. And uh. even the Adams mock a bit how absurd it is. How true. Stranger things have happened. But if you can believe that there was a version of the script where this was just an imposter and Fester is never found. But they grew to love him so much they accept him as a member of the family. Oh. Apparently the cast was so horrified by this that they banded together and said it has to end with him being the real brother. They even oh, that's insisted good. that Christina Ritchie, who played Wednesday, tell them Wednesday? of their disgust Wait, Wednesday. to show how serious oh, they Oh, that's supposed to... Sure oh, that's how... Like, a that's like a say Netflix that show, how right? You are, but I guess the story was going to be crazy for like a year ago? Anyway, so might as well go all the way with it. But even with such a lame premise... That, yeah, that's supposed to be like committed to it. Wednesday Adams? It up. Adam's Family was one of the highest grossing films of 1991. And oh, only 1991? Okay. Of underperforming films at the box office making Barry Sonnenfeld an overnight name. It's no surprise that he make two anything years else later, crazy? a sequel was made. Oh. Hey, that's pretty short compared to the Harry Potter schedule. <laughs> was it stronger than the first or weaker? Um, somehow both. I'll tell you after this. How? How did they do it? How did they make it the same? With the same team well, returning <laughs> to work on the sequel, Adam's Family it both? Values picks up where the last storyline left off. With, with another kid? Birth, in the most Morticia way. Push, Mrs. Adams. Unbothered. Almost from the beginning, the film wants to assure you it still has the same edge. As some sequels mm. back then were being watered down for a Ghostbusters much friendly too. audience. They pretty much spit in the face of that right away as Wednesday and Pugsley listen to a girl explain how babies are born from the Cabbage Patch. And the, the cabbage. diamond turned into a baby. Our parents are having a baby too. They had sex. What? Let's see him put that in the new movies. So There's a new movie. Does much better okay. in its writing. 
no Were mistake, those knives? The, the first one turned out great, but the story was pretty forced. Here, the story is much funnier and matches what the Adams would see as a threat. In three plots, no less. There's one plot about a nanny named Debbie, played hilariously by Joan Cusack. If you're like me to this day, you can't hear her name without thinking, Malibu Barbie. She wants to marry Fester and kill him to get his fortune. Oh. All routine, but it leads to some great character moments, as she has to work her way into the family's good side, which is pretty as an easy outsider. seeing how she's also a psychopath. Okay, well. I just want to grab them and squeeze them till there's not a breath left in their tiny little bodies. <laughs> Another plot they're like, her sending we'll the kids to summer camp doctor? because they're getting too close to her plans. Where Wednesday falls in love, kind of, to a boy played by David Crumholtz. Many say the best laughs in the movie are here, and I really can't disagree. As seeing them interact off the sunny and upbeat crowd and how it slowly suffocates them is pretty damn hilarious. How long do we have to stay in here? Uh, until we crack. Also, the wonderfully sadistic That's... camp counselors, played by the great Peter McNichol and just as great Christine Baraski, are fantastic to watch as they try to ah. be patient with their chipper mood, but find themselves cracking every once in a while. Don't we just hate that? Also, oh, bros wearing a chronograph watch we wish they as a camp counselor. Yes! Oh, no, we don't. Oh, there are also like a million flavors of prejudice leading to a recital that I'm sure I don't have to play any clips from because it always makes the rounds every Thanksgiving. Oh. Hey, screw it. Here's a few anyway. You have taken the land which is rightfully ours. My people will oh, have oh. pain <laughs> and devastation. Your people will have stick shifts. God, Wait, good. what? The third plot involves the like, baby. Like they had to drive sick, manual cars? Which to them is the equivalent of looking like, like transmission? a baby alive. Oh no. Oh. He lives. Even though this is all still far-fetched, the stories feed into each other and move the film forward creating more relatable problems that families deal with. Splitting up, not getting enough time with someone, not fitting in, young love, uh, not liking a new family what is that member, haircut? not liking two family members, them not liking you back. And sure, I guess some families have and someone marrying wedding. for other motives, but you get the idea. These are more family-centered problems that people can identify with. It looks like they're and just for again, a funeral. And the heart of it is that you can do or say whatever you want to them, but at the end of the day, you break up family, that's where they draw the line. That's when they start Wait, so is everybody turning into her now? I placed Fester under some strange sexual spell. I respect that. I respect that? Can we see him? Again, for such demented movies, it's kind of sweet. Fester is allowed to act a lot more like Fester this time, as in the last film he had amnesia and was technically playing an imposter. So it's fun uh, to see Lloyd go much more into the traditional nutball role. My name is Fester. It means to rot. Oh, I admit I like uh -huh. the ant in the other film a what, bit more because she felt like a real ant, where Carol Kane seems more focused on making the joke work. With that said, she does always make the joke work. Next and burn. What is she doing? Just to curse. Have a nice day. Wait, just a I curse? I also feel a little sorry for Pugsley, played by Jimmy Workman, because I feel like he really got sidelined for Wednesday. I think the team well, just didn't think they know what made to do with him, where Richie just him. stole the show playing Wednesday. So they clearly liked writing for her more. With that said, when he does have <laughs> a scene, he makes a count. When you have a new baby, one of the other children has to die. Which one? What? They only need one boy. Ooh. In fact, I think the Girl Scout from the previous film gets more screen time than him. Mercedes McNabb returns as Amanda Buckman, who I guess was so satisfyingly smug in her bit role in the first movie, they that, made that... her one of the villains. And it's a huge villains? compliment to say it's hard to figure out which villain is better, her or Joan Cusack. They that are both is so a large hilarious and so psychotic in their own unique ways. Why are you dressed like somebody died? Wait. <laughs> what do you mean, so, wait? Okay, the jokes and story are better, so the film should be better, right? Not entirely. As great as this is, there is one major element missing. The atmosphere. No, oh, it's uh, there. Still plenty oh, of it's just not and as... art design, but much like another Sonnenfeld sequel, Men in Black 2, the environment takes one. a back seat to the jokes. And something is missing when that's done. With the exception well, of maybe Fester howling at do, the moon do in the people, opening, like, every like scene non-critical people, like the average and movie yeah, goer, it's a comedy, do they care you know that much saying, about... But that's not always how the first film worked. Like, do they There's many scenes remember scenes like this? are just being themselves in a surreal and fantastical world, and that was enough. Again, like the comics, oh, sometimes golf. just letting you breathe in this world, or maybe even die in this world, gave oh. you a sense of really being there. Fester Look at this scene where they say they're gonna throw Fester a party. A party for me. 
की है ऑन It does make sense. It's a follow-up. Um, They want to beg your pardon. Ante, What just happened there? Something is missing when you're focusing a little too much on the writing and not enough on living the world created. They do what they want to do, say what they want to say. Oh, yeah, I kind of forgot to mention. The, there's rap songs in these. Why did they do that? I want to bring that? this up because I guess Snoop Dogg voiced cousin Id in the newer films and of course did a rap as him. because you know Snoop Dogg like scaring us in as many ways as possible. You know I never left this high about it back but what I want to know is what I want to get. I want to why is Snoop Dogg in the Adams okay. family? On top of the MC Hammer song MC Hammer credits, of course which I what? can't help but have a soft spot for. It. There is something fun <laughs> about having them trap? listen to rap music. Also bro is above It the windscreen. It's contradictory for their style but that's almost what makes Armor's sense about that guy. It. Everything is contradictory to them. Even cousin it is listening to too legit to quit in his car. What car is that? Back then, that made me laugh so hard because I just love knowing he was an MC Hammer fan. That was so bizarre. Him suddenly uh, changing his voice and rapping out of nowhere, not as much. That's also you gotta something. love the laziness of switching out whoop there it is with whoop the Adams family there it is. Really? Care what That's funny. Says, it doesn't beat their masterpiece. Oh, please. Pig power in the house. Google what? Like to see if I'm lying. I know idea what I that is. Because on the show there's always been elements of the mainstream in Adam's family that have since become dated, but it still doesn't take away from it. It shows more what a time capsule some parts can be, but the majority of it's still oh, so keeps who's their driver? What like what what is no this part story? Of it Him. It feels like it's cheating us out of what the original style was. Like the one to get the party started plugged in way. Yeah, you know the drill by this point. Like just with that said, I've seen very little of the Adams family. Do kids actually like grow up watching the Adams family now? I never checked out the straight to video Adams family reunion. And yes, I do mean video as there's no DVD release of it. Mm. I guess it's that good. Just tape. Yeah. I will admit though Tim Curry was the perfect choice to replace Raul Julia at that point in time. I saw a Wait, little bit what? of the series reboot and honestly thought it captured part of the original show pretty well. That's odd. No, that's cousin it. That, that, that's that, cousin odd. Who's on first? Too much for the Saturday morning cartoon. Ironically, a little too colorful for me. It's Maybe very colorful. Black and white, That'd be a little bit better or and yeah, just Yeah, I've only seen clips of the animated films and They just don't look like my thing. Ah, uh, for me, I the guess Charles it's Adams I, cartoons are the same. Maybe it's films. like to get kids interested in it and then as they get mean, older, they're like, "Hey, joyful here's the older version like that you might that enjoy." Be very depressing and very dark. It's a part of life we like should always be afraid of, and there is something strangely encouraging about seeing characters who aren't. Yes, it's in a fictional world and we should literally do the things that they do because we wouldn't survive them. But their attitude and optimistic demeanor to the scarier also, side do, of things. Also, does she always have like draws us light to. only hitting her That's eyes? That's why I think the more dark it is, the better it is. It is ironic that Burton turned down this movie only decades later to do a different oh, kind of project. Oh, when's that? Was that a movie we'll or a show? It turns out. All I can say is if they capture even a fragment of the creepy, kooky, and mysteriously gooky that these films did, I think we'll be in good hands. Either way, we'll still have these movies to nice visit catch. the Adams. He's really good at catching things. Sick house. I'm a nostalgia critic guy. Remember it so you don't huh. have to. I learned a lot about the Adams family in this video. Uh. Malibu <laughs> Barbie. I don't I don't understand what's significant about that. What's up that? everybody? Our cameos for charity are still friends doing of great. Fire so we're going to switch it up this month. All Aren't for firefighters are taking the water money to friends of fire because they fight with water. Friends of firefighters is a not-for-profit organization that provides I highly recommend getting a cameo from them. I did too. Where you roast me? They're on YouTube. And Absolutely hilarious. Active and retired New York firefighters as well as their family members. So if you want a cameo from me as the nostalgia critic saying happy birthday or congrats or, or whatever roast. you can think or of, click the link below and be supporting a wonderful charity. And even if you're like, screw you, I don't want a cameo from you. Well, spread the word about this charity anyway. 
Check out the site, donate, or share it on social media. Thanks so much yeah. again, and take care. There's like 10 seconds left, though. Okay. Inside Out 2. I haven't seen any of the uh, Inside Out order. The, the, it, just take a... Like, if you know of a movie, just odds are I haven't seen it. I actually have seen, I believe, the first Austin Powers movie. Haven't seen that one. I... T t t Hotel Transylvania. I've seen that one, though. Uh, Princess Bride. That was almost this video, actually. I don't know what that is. Happy Feet. I've seen Happy Feet. I think I've seen Hoodwink, actually. Wow, this is at Mrs. Doubtfire. I haven't seen it. Diver Wimpy Kid. I don't think I saw that. I've never heard of that. Well, me, I've heard of it. Ne haven't seen the Minions movie. Jimmy Neutron. I haven't seen that one. Scooby-Doo. I've seen that one. That The song in that one is amazing. Yeah, no, it's just Chances Are the Lawnmower Man. I don't know what that is. I don't know if I did a video on that or not. I've done so many Nostalgia Creek videos at this point. Every single Monday, I believe Nostalgia Creek. I've also never seen Beetlejuice. Um... Actually, I could do that next, actually, if you want me to. Um, or I could save it for when I eventually do a movie reaction channel, if that's ever even possible for me to do. But this was the Adams Family movies, which I guess is just the two, basically, that I covered. And he talked about, like, you know, the new stuff. And mo mostly, it was just the first two. But let me know what you think about the Adams Family down below in the comment section. I look forward to reading your comments. They're always funny. Uh, especially the last one. The last video had a ton of hilarious comments. Um, apparently, Mr. Rogers is not Captain America. My bad. Um, <laughs> it's just so funny reading the comments. I read every single one of your comments. So leave them down below. Let me know what the next nostalgic video should be. And I hope you have a wonderful rest of the day. But until next video, take care and keep the music.